All right, hey, we are making good headway with getting a number of these done out of the box here. Um, again, let's just start a project. Um, I'm closing my eyes, guys. Let's see what we've got. Okay, I got a, oh, we've got a Maserati. All right, let's, let's see what's going on with that bugger. Obviously, the sticker looks filthy. I mean, to me, it just it looks, oh, my God, it looks like it uh, used a bath. Uh, it's got the headlights, it's got the bumper on the back. Or bump on the front, bump our hand on the back. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, it's got a chassis with it. Don't know if chassis works. We'll try it out. Um, can't tell about the screw posts from here too well. So let me get the um, body off the chassis. I'll check the chassis. Uh, I tell you what, if the only thing is, is we got to clean this bugger up and get the uh, decal off, we're in good shape. But we'll check the chassis as well. I just turned the transformer on. Let me get the uh, mods ready up against the uh, little nodes there. Ah, it works, guys. Sounds like it needs oil, maybe a cleaning. But it works. It works. Got one that works. Well, that's a bonus, huh? Very good. Very good. All right. Listen, hey, I just got the uh, body off the chassis there. Um, looking at the screw posts. Looking at the screw posts. What do we got? What do we got? We got two screw posts in good shape, guys. Glass is in good shape. Um, one thing I noticed when I was taking it off, though, it's probably hard to see, but that back bumper is moving just a little bit. I've noticed that with some of the Maseratis, they give a little bit. They don't come all the way out. Some have. Some have. But if there's a, like a little bit of play in there, I've noticed that on some of the Maseratis. I know when they use the, uh, like the hot knife to you know, uh, melt the plastics together there, it makes a little mushroom head, and that's good, and it's holding it in place. But there's just a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit loose. So, um... What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It Again, to me, I don't know if you can see the roof as well as I can, but it's just the filthy. The trunk has got you know, um, blackness in the lines, uh, in the trunk grooves and stuff like that. And uh, a good washing. Plus, let's go ahead and do this. Let's just get get the, uh, the, the, the decal off, and then we'll uh, dress the chassis. It, I, I'm going to clean the chassis. It looks like there's oxidation on the uh, bottom plate and all that stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll dress the chassis second. All right, guys, here's one of my favorite steps is dunking this darn thing. Uh, again, the water isn't too hot. It's it's hot, but it's um, it's not scalding, and it's not burning. It's not bubbling. It's, it's, it's not boiling, nothing like that. I'm just going to go ahead and submerge that uh, Maserati in there. And again, about 20, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. That should be fine to loosen up the um, the decal that's on there. Then I've got a I, I got to go get it from the shop, but it, it's a very 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 soft toothbrush. It's like a baby's toothbrush. I'm going to use that with a little bit of uh, liquid soap and just very gently go ahead and clean the body. But let me give it a, a, a bit in there, and we'll get it out and see if we can get that decal off. Yeah, while it's baking, I, I, I just got the toothbrush, but it's tiny. This little thing is tiny. Plus those bristles on there, you see those bristles? They are so soft, guys. They are really just so soft. I don't want to use a medium or a hard tooth, but just something that's really soft is all we're going to use. All right, getting ready to fish it out of there. It's been uh, plenty of time. Let me get that bugger out of there and see what we can do with that, uh, that decal. Oops, there we go. Get that. Okay. Again, often, if you can just scrape it off with your thumbnail, something easy like that, it'll come right off. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Just, I mean, just peeling that bugger right back like that. Isn't that the easiest thing to do there, guys? You know what? It really is. Okay, let me do this. Uh, so I can use both hands. I'm going to stop the camera now, but uh, I'll get the rest of that decal off. We'll clean it up. That decal came off. I mean, I had it about, you know, 10, 11, 12 seconds into it. That was about it. And you can see it's all sudsy and foamy right now. Uh, I just put a little bit of the soap on there, and I'm starting to uh, go over it with the toothbrush. And I'll, I'll, I'll finish up, then I'll rinse it off and show you what we got. Look at there, guys. I mean, that thing is pristine now. That looks like it just right out of the factory. I know it's still wet. I know it's still wet. Decals off, and boy, all that dirt and everything that was on the trunk and the roof there, that's gone. Inside looks, looks real good. Uh, I know I've said it before, but I'm going to keep uh, making sure that, uh, you know, I, I keep saying, you see right there, my little paper towel, I, I've wicked both ends, and I was just getting ready to uh, make sure that the inside of the screw posts are dry. I'm going to dry the thing off my, my shirt here, but then I'm just going to make sure that the that those posts don't have any water on it. Again, that's the last thing you want to do, have a drop of water in it that you can't see, put the screw in, it rusts, you try to get it out, and you break, uh, break the screw post. All right, give me just a minute. Boy, look at that, it came out real good. I got that bugger dry. That came out really, 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 really nice. Uh, just uh, another quick note. Yeah, I, I know we mentioned the screw posts, but the window posts, they're all good. 
the uh, wheel wells. They're all good. I mean, this thing is really, really nice. When they're dirty, um, they, um, and they have the stickers on them, guys, you, uh, people really don't want to give you top dollar on eBay. I know I've said that before, but people really, they don't want to do it. So you, you take a minute, you get the dirty decal off, you wash it up, and uh, we're going to address the chassis next, but then when you got it looking like new, people are going to buy it. People are going to buy it now. So not only we increased the value, we made it look better. And if you, somebody wants to slide into the collection, now you have a piece that you want to slide in the collection with that darn sticker on there going across the hood. Yeah, who the hell wants that, right? All right, so uh, where's the chassis? There's the chassis. Uh, let's take a look at it. Um, it I, we know it runs. What am I looking at? It was either the front or the back. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I noticed this. You see the back uh, hub? Yeah, it's got chrome on it, but it's nasty. Front one, eh, not too bad, not too bad, not, not too bad. I noticed that one earlier. Um, again, the back one, missing some chrome. Front one looks kind of gnarly. Not too bad, though, not too bad. So I, I think I might, uh, one thing I might do is just go ahead and put some new hubs all the way around just so it really looks pristine on there. You know, for, again, I'm going to put this bugger on eBay. Uh, if somebody's looking at the uh, chassis, they're going to be looking at a good chassis. We're going to clean it up here in just a sec. All right, just got the chassis uh, pulled apart, and uh, oh, sorry about that. Getting ready to clean it. I uh, got the magnets over there. The uh, one on the uh, bottom is the back one. I like telling everybody to do that. Then you always know which one the back one is. Uh, I'm going to take the wire uh, Dremel brush to the bottom of the engine. We're going to touch the uh, springs that hold the brushes up. And the the front brush spring. To me, you know, I'll get into a little bit uh, better, but it looks like it could be pushed up just a little bit. The the four um, hubs there, I'm going to get rid of those. I, I've got some uh, new old stock here. I'm going to use those, and you know, they're just going to look. It's going to look pristine. Tires are in good shape. They're all uh, pliable and everything like that. The shoes, we're going to clean them again with their wire Dremel. I got the front axle there. It's pretty clean. Now you see this, the springs there. They look pretty squatty. They've been like squished for 50 years. You know, that's what it looks like to me. I'm going to uh, refresh those. You know, I put them on a very, very, very uh, small, thin screwdriver, and I refresh them. I, you know, elongate them just a little bit. And the brushes, they don't look too bad. They really don't. They, they don't look too bad. I'll get like a business card and, and rub them down and make sure that the brushes look uh, real good. So I'm going to clean this up, uh, get the shoes clean, and uh, reassemble, add some oil, obviously. And uh, let's see if we can get this chassis running real good. Just a real quick note, I started the um, uh, cleaning process and I looked at the back axle. This is one of the very few, 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 that there's no like fuzz or hair or dog or cat hair or anything around that back axle. Usually around that crown gear in the back axle, it just picks up everything. This one's pretty darn clean. All right, most everything's clean. I, I, I've got everything cleaned up uh, except for the. Uh, I, I got to grab the uh, shoe or not the shoes. The uh, the brushes. The brushes. I clean the brushes. But uh, well, I, what I, what I'm getting at here is that this front spring here to the um, brush isn't up to my satisfaction. So what I do is I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll lay it on the bench and just very easily, just very easily, I, I push the screwdriver up just to see if I can get it. Yeah, there you go. That's all I need. I just need a little bit. So, you know, instead of uh, one being up too far, the other one not being up far enough or whatever, if you can get them up to where they're like same or similar height, it's going to increase the performance of the uh, chassis is what that'll do. So I just taken the time to uh, do that straight away. All right, I know it's still t torn apart, but boy, I got this bugger cleaned up. I got some uh, new, fresh hubs. Look at those hubs. Those hubs are, like, awesome, guys. I mean, they really are. I got the uh, shoes clean, front axles clean, the uh, top and bottom plate of the uh, the engine there uh, clean, you know, all the gears and the, the bottom plate, obviously, uh, just absolutely sparkling clean. You take that wire brush to it, that Dremel, I mean, look at that. That is just, like, pristine clean. Really good. I got the uh, brushes cleaned up. The, uh, what do we got there? The uh, springs are refreshed. And we're just good to go. Let me go ahead and do some reassemble, and let's put it on the track, see how it does. Hey, just real quick, I, I, I just put the uh, hubs on. They're barely on the axle. I put them on just with my fingers. But this is a great way to get the hubs on, and you know they're going to be straight. You see how I'm lining this hub up with the corner here? I'm going to be lining that one up with the corner here, but I, I'm kind of pushing it to the right a little bit. And then all I do, all I do is when it gets, you know, it just, it just straightened it out, just straightened it out. So then you just take it, 
you know, and you know that it sh there should be, you know, a lot of play there. But what's interesting is if you tighten it all the way to where you feel that the uh, and the, that the hub is on the end of the axle, the hub is on the end of the axle, and you can tell by this, you can tell, you know, by tightening it, that is the perfect amount, and, and, and uh, it should swing freely. It should swing freely. That's what normal is. We're going to go ahead and oil in there and oil the other side of the axle. But uh, just real quick, that's the easiest way to get the hubs on, and you know they're going to be put on uh, as straight as your, your, your bench uh, vice is going to be. Just finishing up the back one right there. There it goes. It's tight enough. And again, I, ju I just wanted to point out, as far as the back one, guys, it should it should swing, and no oil on here yet, no oil. It should swing freely without the oil. That's what normal is. Looking good. Just got that chassis done. I'm getting ready to oil it, guys. Um, uh, the oil I've got here, now listen, um, some guys, I I'm just going to address this real quick. Some guys like a thinner viscosity of oil, some guys like a thicker uh, viscosity oil. You see the two different oils? I'm trying to get them in the camera for you. Uh, both of the, or, uh, but yeah, both of these I got it. Um, and I keep mentioning these guys. Golf Coast Metal Rarity, they're great. Uh, remember Aurora had that red oil that was really thick? That's like this one. That's, that's a, like darn near the vi viscosity of this one. Over the years, I've went from the thicker oil to the thinner oil. Uh, you have to oil more often with this one, with the uh, with the uh, 107. But I tell you what, I like it. I like the way it comes out of the tube. I, it's just absolutely wonderful. So uh, my, my, my point is, is like, again, if you need an oil, a racing oil, a very fine oil, these uh, at Gulf Coast Motor Railing, th th those guys use uh, those oils on their model trains. It's just very exceptional stuff. It works great. And again, they ship anywhere. Uh, Golf Coast Motor Railing ship, ships anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I got the chassis reassembled. Uh, I'm going to give it some oil. going to test it out on the uh, transformer. The reason I like testing on transformer, and you guys know this, you guys know this. You know, if you oil that crown gear, when you oil the crown gear on the bottom there, you know, and you get all oiled up, and then you test it on the track, it just spews oil on the track. You know what I mean? So when you test it on the uh, transformer, Transformer, it spews it on the transformer in yourself, obviously, but uh, it doesn't spew it on the track and doesn't you know eat up the track that way. So uh, let me go and do this. I'm going to throw some oil on it. I'm going to put it back on the uh, Maserati back there, and let's see, go around the track. Uh, let me get the transformer off here. Um, a good, I, I just got it oiled up and I tested on the transformer. Good buddy of mine, Jerry. He he asked me recently. He said, "Hey, hey, listen, uh, some of the T Jet chassis are squealing often, 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 often. When they squeal, you see that hull right there, the uh, where the the engine you know comes through that little uh, hull right there. Often, if you hear that squeal, drop of oil fixes it right there." Not every time. Most of most of the time. Most of the time. When you hear the those buggers squeal, it isn't the crown gear. It's not the front axle. Not the back axle. It's not the uh, gears. Often, 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 it's that little hole right there. So uh, just a little tidbit. Um, you know, make sure it's got not too much. Just less than a drop, and should be fine there. But again, when you hear that noisy squeal, noisy squeal that these things make, give it a drop there. Usually, that's all it takes. Oh my gosh, gorgeousness right there. Look at that bugger, huh? Look at that thing, huh? All the way around, all the way around. Um, remember the decal or, you know, the sticker on the top? How dirty and nasty it was? Look at the rims. I mean, that, you know, you want to, again, slide that in your collection? We got some. I'm going to undo the camera. Give me just a sec. Let's put this bugger on the track. I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's put this thing right on the track. Let's see what we get. Give me just a sec. Got the transformer. Trying to focus in. All right. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Nice. Man, that bugger hauled mud, doesn't it? That's better than I thought it was going to be. I don't even have to. That, that, that's it, man. Right there. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. All right. Fantastic. All right. Hey, listen. I'm going to call it. Let me get the transformer here. There you go. Uh, I mean, come on. Sweet. Absolutely sweet. And what's anybody going to say about that? Just a sweet easy project and again guys listen to me listen to me go to ebay buy them in a lot buy them you know hey there's going to be some junk with it there's always going to be a couple of gems or jewels in there okay so even if you have to spend a couple bucks to get some uh things that aren't going to sell well you can still salvage them or get the glass or get the uh bumper or something there's going to be uh, part of a chassis or something that's going to really help you out so buy low 
fix them up and resell them on eBay. That's what I do, guys. It's a blast. It's absolutely a blast. Because, again, remember what it looked like with that, that stupid decal on the top of it? Come on. This is something somebody's going to go, look at that piece. That's totally nice. It's really nice. Nothing matter with it. You know what? I don't have a turquoise to win. It's going into my collection. That's where that's at. Look at that bugger. But with the, with the, again, with the decal on it, they'd look at it and go, oh, it's dirty and it's nasty. So my point is, is fix them up, clean them up. If you want to put them in your collection, great. If you want to resell them, you just increase the value. All right, guys, hope you had fun. Jeff from Smoking DJs.